Well, the Canadian dollar is rallying against the U.S. dollar, against the British pound sterling and against the euro, among other international currencies, on the unexpected rate hike from the Bank of Canada. Unexpected because the bank has raised its benchmark interest rate by a full percentage point rather than the 75 basis points that markets were expecting. Joining me now is Kathy Lean. She's managing director of BK Forex. Kathy, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, what's your, uh, your early takeaway from the Bank of Canada's dramatic announcement? I think there's no question that the Bank of Canada wants to get ahead of the Fed. They, you know, are looking at the inflation numbers that came out from the U.S. Um, this morning. They're looking at their own levels of inflation, and they're realizing that the Fed needs to be um, very aggressive, and that's going to strengthen the U.S. dollar and make um, the Canadian dollar weaker, which will exacerbate their own inflation pressures at home. And that is why I think, you know, the Bank of Canada decided to front load the um, tightening that they, were, that they were going to space out across the year because they wanted to make sure that when the Fed is ready um, to hike, that they too have have lifted rates aggressively, you know, minimizing the potential, um, upside, the potential downside in the Canadian dollar that would make inflationary con conditions domestically worse. Interesting. So uh, while central banks, of course, never uh, publicly say that they make their rate decisions uh, based on currency considerations, you think that was a factor here? I think that the weakness of the Canadian dollar is definitely adding to the pain of rising inflationary pressures and making it very difficult to reverse that trend. And with the Federal Reserve, you know, expected to possibly, you know, do the same amount at their next meeting. The, I mean, at, at, before this it was 75 basis points. Now they're talking about 100 basis points. That I think the Bank of Canada really wanted to get ahead of all of this. So currency factors, while it's not supposed to be in play, you know, have a very um, fundamental impact on inflation, and therefore has to be an input. In the central bank's decision. Does uh, this uh, news affect your mid-term or longer-term view on the Canadian dollar? I think that we really have to listen to what the governor says because, you know, there's a lot of um, little changes in the Bank of Canada statement that suggest that they potentially could slow down from here. Like, for example, they removed the, the language that said they will have to continue to move forcefully going forward. Um, they're still committed to rate hikes, but by removing that word forcefully and recognizing that, you know, growth um, will slow um, in the in the coming months globally is a sign that they could potentially um, slow down. However, if the governor um, just kind of laser focuses on inflation and really downplays the um, risk to global growth in the um, in the months ahead, then I think you know the rally in the Canadian dollar is intact. Overall, though, you know in terms of Canadian dollar, you know the battle between the greenback and the Canadian dollar is going to continue. It's going to go head to head. Um, I still think you know the 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 Canadian dollar may see some weakness, but against the other currencies, like you said, sterling, euro, the Australian dollar, I think the loonie is going to continue to outperform. Uh, that was my next question, actually. The Canadian dollar trading, I, I believe now, gets at, at its highest level ever versus British pound sterling and uh, its highest level versus the euro, I, I believe, in close to 20 years. You think that, and we know, of course, that uh, that uh, before today, the Canadian dollar had outperformed all of the G7 currencies with the exception of the US dollar. That's something you've got to understand when you see the Canadian dollar trading in 52-week in low territory versus the greenback. You think the outperformance performance of our currency versus other uh, key domestic currencies will continue. I think so, because there's a lot of headwinds in different parts of the world that Canada is less subject to. I mean, basically, in Europe, you've got that energy crisis. You have um, the risk of a greater risk of recession. You have the Bank of England already noting that, you know, perhaps they need to slow down um, and, and do fewer rate hikes going forward. So I think, you know, that's going to make the loonie more appealing versus those currencies. Down under, you know, China's still deal dealing with um, their COVID war. And, you know, that's going to weigh on Australian growth, especially if they continue to clamp down hard on restrictions. So, you know, there's certain factors that are affecting other parts of the world that Canada is less affected by. And until less, until unless that changes, I think the Canadian dollar will continue to outperform. The Bank of Canada release was not the only dramatic release of the morning. We also had the U.S. inflation print in the United States, excuse me, where inflation rose by 9.1 percent. What is your view of the Fed and the Fed's uh, coming response? I think the Fed has been unambiguously hawkish. And, you know, I don't necessarily think that they had been 
considering a, hard, a full 1% rate hike um, prior to the CPI report, I think they'll still um, opt for a smaller move, maybe somewhere in between like 75 um, basis points. But I think, you know, overall inflationary conditions um, are hot. And any um, any like speculation of inflation peaking, I think, has really um, been killed by the latest CPI. Because even if inflation is peaking, it's peaking at such a higher um, uh, level that it's going to take a very long time for it to you know descend from from where it needs to be back to a more comfortable level for american consumers